Welcome back, everyone, to our Groundskeeper Chat Series. I'm your host, Meg Kruger, and today I'm joined by Andy Hubbard. I'm hopefully you said that right, right, Andy? You're close, Hebrar, but I will forgive. We'll let you give you this pass, this first one. <laughs> The whole time I was doing that story on uh, your dad, Mike, I would come into my boss's office and I would, I think I would say the last name different every single time. Yeah. And well, I with have, him, it's, him, it's okay. No, Matt, because he doesn't say it right all the time. So you're, you're <laughs> maybe okay. that's where the confusion comes from. <laughs> yeah. But today, you and I are going to be talking about branding 101, how a groundskeeper can, you know, start branding themselves or their crew. Um, if if this is day one on the job or this is something that 30 years down the road they're they're wanting to put under their uh, tool belt as a repertoire asset whatever you call it yeah. um so i'll let you introduce yourself and then we'll get started okay i'm andy hebrard uh, owner operator of athletic applications we primarily work on athletic surfaces on the west coast uh, based out of phoenix arizona but also do a handful of projects nationwide, a lot in Southern California, a lot of specialties, like those little subspecialties, uh, the detail work of baseball, like your mound building and your your edging and your side cutting, resodding, and then uh, line and logo painting uh, is especially where we thrive. That's where Pioneer and myself have started a great relationship probably about 10 years ago with all the painting specialty sort of pieces, uh, synthetic, natural grass. My pops has been in the business quite a while. So yeah. kind of what he passed, he passed down what he could, you know, and then it's just something, something of creating your own brand is, is something I learned in business school is you don't have to take everything from one teacher you know it's it's great to have multiple teachers or multiple teams to learn from and then you just pick little pieces mm -hmm. and with that you essentially create your internal brand right that brand words thrown around a lot you know but basically that is who, who you are you know is essentially what brand means to me you know so yeah. you you take you take bits and pieces from from people uh, that you learn from so for me that was that was my dad number one and then uh Went out to Washington, D.C., worked for the Redskins for a season and then uh, under Eric Hansen at the Dodgers for another season and then kind of took off from there. And that's a great point is that I think that's how it can be really an authentic effort is if you just, you know, go and see how other people are doing it and pick what works for you or what feels true for you instead of trying to, like, exactly replicate what someone else is doing because not everything is going to feel organic or authentic if you're just copy and pasting essentially yeah correct and at times it's tough to you know as you're working with different crews it's tough to figure out where you where you slide in and where you can offer little pieces that maybe they hadn't thought about in the in the past and they're in their time you know and uh when you when when that exchange can happen and it can be give and take that's when both entities thrive you as a person and then who you're working for or working with or uh that, that's that's a great that's a great thing definitely and i'm excited to have you kind of join this series because you have a lot of different perspectives one a lot of people have this story where it's like oh i i went to college and I, I worked on the grounds crew or I never heard about this until I got a summer job, but this was something like born and bred into your, into your system. So that's a really cool like point of view that you're coming um, from. And then also you're coming from the perspective of a business owner. So like branding wasn't a choice. Like it was a must have, if you wanted people to, you know, buy your goods and services, you have to be able to get your name out there. Um, yeah. So I think that, you know, one of the questions I've been leading with is like, has this been an organic effort or um, is this something that you had to really work on? But I can imagine as a business owner, it was something that you put a lot of thought into. So walk us through that a little bit about, you know, is something something as simple as like choosing the name and then like deciding to take it onto social, your lines and logos, right? On mm -hmm. Twitter. Yeah. T talk a little bit about that whole process. 
Well, essentially, you know, your brand is is who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and the start of that, that I found to be true, just not only with groundskeeping or business ownership, but it's just more of a lifestyle sort of uh, brand is being a good person to other people, you know, being willing to lend a helping hand, whether you're going to get reciprocated back or not, you know, and um, doing what you say you're going to do is super important. It's, it's mm -hmm. simple. It's a simple concept, but at times it's really hard too. You know, if, if you do tell an athletic director, you know, I'll be there at eight 30. Well, it, as simple as that may be, you know, you can set your alarm clock and you can have your truck packed and have your crew lined up, but there's a lot of little pieces that have to happen in order for that little you know, it's just a little, I'll be there at 830. It's something so simple, but it's tough too. You know, so doing what you say you're going to do is a big part of your brand and who you are, you know. Um, as far as the the social media is concerned, you know, it's kind of, you know, I what what do you do? You know, who are you? Yeah. And you see some kind of little catchy, little catchy ones out there, you know, but obviously having your your T's crossed and your eyes dotted and whatnot, as far as, okay, you go through going through there and having your official, you know, your name, but also yeah. having a catching line, but what do you do? Where are you from? And then uh, the content, you know, so fortunately for us, we're able to keep the content coming because we've created a customer base and um, we're able to keep the projects moving, you know, uh, yeah and keeping the fresh stuff out there, you know, but that's yeah, you're definitely thing. not lacking on the content. And I'm always, <laughs> a, I especially love when you'll, you'll um, share like a, a four photo series on Twitter and I'll be like, Oh wait, that's from four different places. <laughs> like yeah. it's not from yeah. one job and, yeah. and that's just incredible. Yeah. We stay busy. I mean, that's, that's the one thing that's tough about owning your own business is you're essentially your shop, you know, is, is yep. your garage or your storage unit, or if in my case, I've got an oversized van that we run out of, you know, but you don't really have a home base where, okay, my sprayer is parked in the same spot every time. And then I get to my office and it's the same routine. My routine is constantly changing, you know, and it's oftentimes on the fly, you know, and that's just part of uh, the nature of the beast for me. Uh, it's, it's, it's challenging. It's difficult for sure. You know, because with every site comes with, okay, where's water access, where's site access, who's the point of contact, where's the logo actually going, wow. you know, it, there's so many variables, um, that have to do with creating a successful project, whatever that may be. And then it's tough to, you know, you gotta have very selected focus in these like time slots or mm -hmm. project slots where, once this is done, you got to move on to the next one and the next one. And then you eventually get home to your family after that, you know? So it's kind of, it's, it comes in ebb and flows, you know, but it's also provides a lot of flexibility at times too, you know, not having to go somewhere and punch in at seven every day. You know, we can be flexible with where we are in the country or what kind of crews we're running and, and kind of go from there. Definitely. And how, you know, you mentioned it at the start that social really was about like who you are, what you're doing. And I think that's such a great place for people to start is that our industry is so niche that it's like worried on this little secret that if you just share a glimpse into it, people are going to be engaged. Yeah. And how have you found that, you know, how important is that visibility as a groundskeeper, as a, a a business owner, how does that visibility really play an important role in what you do? Well, it's not, not, not only just to be visible to others, but seeing, you know, vision yeah. to, to other people of what they're doing, you know, is so, so great. You can pick up so many little pointers and so many little insights just by what people are sharing. And, um, we're fortunate to have an industry that is pretty friendly to pretty helpful, not, not, as cutthroat as some, you know, certainly there are, you know, trade secrets uh, where, you know what, we should probably talk about that in person, like come out to a job site and we'll actually tell you how we do that sort of thing, you know, yeah. because a lot of guys have worked their lives on perfecting these processes, you mm -hmm. know, and 
Um, so you kind of got to be not careful, but you got to, you know, it's a little selective in a way as far as what you put out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but oftentimes professionals in this, in this kind of, uh, in this network are pretty, very transparent, you know, pretty honest, pretty open. We're all dealing with the same thing. We're all dealing with game times, yeah. uh, <laughs> suits, you know, supply and demand, material issues, you know, so, and uh, safety, playability, and aesthetics, you know, so we're really, we have the same kind of uh, fight, you know, so it's yeah. to help one another is is a beautiful thing in this industry, and that's super appreciative for friends that I've leaned out, out to and colleagues, and um, if anyone out there is seeing this and they've got any questions about anything, be more than willing to answer answer your questions than one and more, more willing to have a volunteer on crew i got <laughs> lunch uh, happy hour after but uh, we'd love to love to get anybody out there on crew love that and and you really like um described the industry perfectly in the sense that it has this sharing environment um to where people could really like send out a question on social or just pick up the phone and call one of their mentors, because everyone's got like a handful of them in this industry and everyone is typically willing to share. Um, and, you know, with that visibility and that sharing element, like how has that impacted your job positively? Uh, the, the Just the, the sheer reach, you know, you're able to reach so many more people and you know, through the through the kind of network of coaches, athletic directors, groundskeepers, and who's liking what and who's sharing what. I mean, it just makes it really easy. A lot of people have uh, reached out to me on Twitter directly, and you know, how much does this cost? And it's to to be able to put a picture out there and then go directly to like potential point of sale, mm-hmm. just just in in one message. You know, uh, is is huge. You know. Yeah, that's incredible. And, you know, if somebody were wanting to start branding themselves, you know, your Twitter is like a perfect example of it in the sense that, um, you know, you're sharing what you're doing. Like you said, it's it's a clear cut um, description of something that people can reach out and say, how much do I have to pay to get this? Mm -hmm. Like and also it's you have a nice blend of personality as well on the channel. Like I said, I I thought for the longest time you were the guy in the overalls and Mm -hmm. he's quite the personality. Um, (laughs) He's my my front man. Everyone's got to have one of those. Yep. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) And like I said, it's just this nice blend of, you know, personality, professionalism, um, and also at the simple on the simple rate, just showing what you do. So if somebody wanted to start replicating that in a sense tomorrow, like where would you suggest they start? Uh, I'd probably say, you know, start to hone in on your region. uh, Mm -hmm. What exactly it is that you do. Uh, Do you sell sneakers? Do you rake dirt? Do you, you know, what, what, what do you do? What do you want to do? And then, you know, our boy Elon has made it so simple and the people before him have made it so simple. As far as you follow one person, it's going to give you three of their favorite guys. And you just, you know, to begin with, I just started following anyone, anyone of interest had no idea who Bermuda 419 was, you know, but all I knew was, man, whoever this guy is, he's at Arizona state a lot. And this bill is incredible, you know, and so you keep following and following and following and kind of liking stuff and you get more, more stuff. And then you end up connecting in real life and then potentially helping each other on a project, you know, so it's, it's interesting to go beyond the computer screen. And I would be, I'd be, uh, you know, reach out to people directly at STMA, Um, reach out to people directly in your region uh, I've got a lot of golf course superintendent friends also, and just, Hey, I'm in your area. You mind if I swing by the shop, you know, it's something so, but we need more of that person, that person, a person, you know, a lot of it is hidden behind a screen name, 
you know yeah. so just getting taking that screen name to the next level uh, in person and uh, with actual human contact human relations you know this yeah. is you, you and i's first time talking on skype we've been on phone and email calls you know over the last six months yeah. um about various things but you then you start to realize and getting comfortable with one another in more of a per you know personable setting exactly and yeah, yeah there's there's no limit to the amount of friends you can gain in this industry that's for sure mm -hmm. and so talking technically and just like on the best practices with branding and social media what are like some of the things that you have found to be successful or some tips that like has kept you um trying to think how to phrase this like on, with social media, things can mm -hmm. get a lot of gray area, especially mm -hmm. when you're running an account for your business, but it also is a display yeah. of your personal reflection. So what are some tips that you've um, had to where you've been successful in showing that personality, but not ruffling too many feathers with your personal yeah. choices? Yeah, this is a big thing, you know, stay in Sweden, you know, stay in that yeah. neutral party, <laughs> just kind of out of the way and and inputting uh, positivity, you know, you can't, don't go diggy as far as, you know, gouging this. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of people in the turf industry that maybe can cross the lines of time, you know, and it's, it's tough because we're, we have that phone on 24 hours a day. We're checking yep. it before bed, when we wake up during the day, posting this, posting that. And sometimes in the heat of the moment, you might, you might catch yourself, you know, for me, it, it might be 120 and, uh, and degrees outside in Phoenix and I might be pissed off. You yep. know, maybe something did break, probably not the time I'm on social media for yeah. hours and then checking stuff, <laughs> but regardless, it's, it's, you got to kind of, uh, one coach, one coach, I was about to fire off is about a more of my coaching days. I used to uh, be an assistant coach at a high school, uh, up in, uh, Portland, Oregon. And I was about to fire off a nasty email to, to another coach about some stuff that I, I felt real disrespectful through the game, you know, yeah. and that's in writing. You can't bring that back. You can delete the tweet or whatever, but one of my great coaching mentors and I kind of, like I started the conversation, it's like taking bits and pieces yep. um, of everyone. He's like, you know what? Wait till the morning. Yeah. You know? And then in the morning I woke up and kind of read that. And I was like, you know, that would have been too much. That yeah. would have been way too much. And Granted, it's on a private email. It wasn't even been out there publicly, but I mean, it's in writing. It's not hard to print it out and show the athletic director and be like, what is this guy doing? You know, yeah. here's, here was the situation and it's only your side of things. And of so I, I would just, you know, err on the side of caution. Uh, but, but at the same time, you know, you got to put your feelings out there. You know, you, you do, you do have to, we're not trying to be a bunch of robots. You know, it is important yeah. to, get a little pissed at times, you know, and, yeah. and what does make you passionate about projects, but okay. Well, it's different about, it's different getting passionate and pissed about your own project versus someone else's, whatever it may be, you know, or, uh, so it just kind of, I, at times when, when accidents do happen, hopefully we recover. <laughs> That's yeah. the first part, uh, recover in person on site. And then, looking back and poking funny yourself, you know? Yeah. So, uh, for instance, I had one guy put the, the string at how we do football fields and yard marks. I've got one cable that has white for yard marks and orange mm -hmm. for lines. So he put it on the 49. One other guy put it on the 50. And of oh, course yeah. it's on, it's on the 50 yard line and it's opening day. Oh. You know, when it's, it's Phoenix, it's September, early September. So it's hot, you know, and, uh, we removed it the best we could with the, with the water we had access to, but then after the fact, you know, I made a comment about being the 49ers, you know? <laughs> and so it's just kind of like, and then you actually gain respect out of like to have humility in yeah. that situation and be humbled you know groundskeeper it's pretty humbling 
it's pretty humbling, you know, uh, whether it's nature, whether it's um, people in the front office or whether it's uh, player, player demands or not, you know, requests. Yeah. Um, it can be pretty humbling at times for sure, especially a lot of us has so much stuff going on and uh, just kind of being able to poke fun at yourself at times when it's necessary is, is very important. Well, a lot of the times where I see people really engaging and relating to one another is when it's over a, here's a photo of a mistake that I really messed mm -hmm. up on this week. Or, yeah. And it's like, oh, thank God someone else yeah, is out here talking about it. You honestly want to respect that person more yeah. because it's like you're human. You know, so, so often on the computer screens, we just publicize what's sexy, you know, yep, what, yep. what are we doing great, you know, and there are times where, you know, I paint a panther blue and it's <laughs> supposed to be black, you know, like there's plenty of like that sort of, that sort of those, those things happen, you know, it's yep. like, how do we recover? And then sometimes you're, you're even in that moment, you might be asking a peer that you met on social of yeah. how you recover to get to where you need to be, you know? So um, it's, it's a weapon, right? You just, you want it, you want it in your back pocket as far as the, the weaponry. Definitely. And I, I love how you put all of that and just, I, there's, there is that fine line, but I think how you said, like, we don't want to be robots and we want to have that personality out there is, is so important. And it is what people relate to. So I like how you said that. Yeah. That wasn't really a question, just a compliment. <laughs> yeah, every, you know, and, and just across the board, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, it's the Insta models don't show the tough times, you yeah. know, that's why they're Insta models, you know, but how are you actually in your real life, you know, and that's, that's, uh, you, you don't want to cross a personal threshold, you know, I, on Twitter, I try to stick uh, completely about business and, yeah. you know, um, and then on other platforms, it's, you know, all about my family or my daughter or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever is going on. And so it's, it's nice to have that separation. And that, yeah. and that's a great route for other people is if they are afraid of, you know, maybe they already have, you know, a platform where they share their family stuff and they don't want that to trickle into business there's so many out there that you could literally take up TikTok, you could take up Twitter, you could take up LinkedIn just for your business name. Like there's so many yeah. different ways to have different elements of your life be on display. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Well, is there anything else I didn't touch on? Um, I really appreciate you doing this, but I want to make sure that I uh, get all your golden nuggets out there. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think we covered quite a bit. Uh, very thankful for Pioneer for having me on. And this is just another great platform for grounds groundskeepers. You know, I would the most probably the, the biggest takeaway is to be a good person to, yeah. to one another. And that is your brand. You know, how who are you? You know, how how do you put your yourself off into public uh, authentically, you know? And then, um, yeah, just to, just to continue making strides professionally, don't be afraid to reach out. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the best thing that you can do, uh, whether it's, you know, around the hotel bar at STMA, you know, if you see a guy that you think you might know, pop in. Yeah. You know, if you're in the wrong circle, they'll let you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just just don't be don't be afraid to be a friend. And uh, that's that's pretty much all I got. I look forward to continue bringing the bringing the heat. We got another football season coming up. So we're, we're excited about that. Lots more logos, lots more variations and exciting projects happening all the time. So let's we'll keep cool. bringing it. We'll definitely keep our eyes out. It's hard to miss you on Twitter. Um, <laughs> you guys are definitely busy. And I look forward to following some more people, Meg. You can't, yeah, I know. You can't have me <laughs> like, out there. Well, only <laughs> Andy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I look forward to hopefully meeting you in person, yeah. person at uh, in Salt Lake City. Yeah, Salt Lake. Looking forward to it. It's back, back, uh, back west. I don't know what they're going to do about the golf day. Maybe uh, go uh, ski trip. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> that should be interesting. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> well, it was great to see you, Andy. You have a great weekend. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.